Welcome friends back to another video and it is spring outside. Well, for what passes a spring for us. Today's video, we're actually going to prep this front lip spoiler for my Performance Model 3. This was sent to me courtesy of the guys at Performance Unplugged, thank you very much. Now this front lip spoiler for me is a looks thing. Now a lot of people will say, well, including Performance themselves, say that it actually increases the range of the car. I'm not completely into that thing. I'm more about the looks of this thing. Now it is sent to me uh, completely unpainted. And I actually tried wrapping this in vinyl, but I failed miserably. And I'm going to spare you the gory details because I actually erased the memory card. But painting is something that I know how to do. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm actually going to prep this. Now, this is unpainted. You can order it from the company in uh, whatever color that you have on your Model 3 if you want to spend a little extra. But I want to paint this in a satin black. So first thing I need to do is actually hit it with some 320 grit sandpaper to scuff it up so that the primer that I'm going to use has something to bite to and then after that we'll do some wet sanding between coats and we'll paint it and then in a follow-up video we'll actually install it in the car so let's follow along the process so we're actually going to tackle the underside first because I want to make sure that we're not going to ruin anything I'm going to take my sandpaper here and you only use half and we'll set that aside yeah that's working quite well Now, if you've never done painting before, the number one thing you need to understand about painting is prep work. Prepping is super important. I don't know if you guys know this before, but uh, I've actually built airplanes. And I'm not talking about model airplanes, although I've done those. But I've actually built real airplanes and actually went through the process of actually wiring them, painting them. And let me tell you, the paint process is very, very labor intensive because aluminum, because that's what airplanes are made of, uh, does not take paint very well. So aluminum is actually very difficult to paint. So it needs a lot of prep work to get anything to stick to that stuff. You also have to make sure that your surfaces are completely clean. So once we're done sanding this down, we're gonna end up hitting it with uh, some isopropyl alcohol. And then before we actually paint, we will also hit it with what they call automotive cheesecloth, which is kind of like cheesecloth, but it has, uh, it's embedded with some wax and that picks up all the lint. All right, I'm not gonna bore you to death. I'm gonna keep sanding this thing and we'll come back and get it ready. Right, so I've just spent the last, well, 45 minutes to an hour sanding this down and I don't see any bare spots. So I think we're ready to clean this up. All right, it's time to wipe this down. So what I'm using here is 70% isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cleaning cloth. And we're gonna soak this down and just give it a quick wipe. I'll probably do this a couple different times just to get all of the dust out of the nooks and crannies. Now this lip spoiler is a little bit flimsy, so this Black & Decker Workmate that I've had for God knows how many decades now, probably 20 years, really comes in handy for holding on to stuff like this while you're working alone. Highly recommended. Not sponsored, just a good tool to have. So the primer that I'm going to be using here is made by a company called Duplicolor. I like this product specifically because when it comes to rattle cans, now let's talk about rattle cans here for a second, because I know a lot of you are gonna go straight to the comments and say, why aren't you painting this in a professional paint booth? Well, first of all, I don't have a professional paint booth, but I know enough to do prep work to be able to get very good results with this. So let's talk about this can here, for example. I want you guys to see the sprayer here. I'm gonna block my face so that the camera doesn't focus on my face. Okay, so it has a blue nozzle on top and it has this little red nozzle on the end and that's positionable so you can change the spray pattern in a fan either horizontal or vertical or anywhere in between now i like this particular primer because it's a filler primer so it really builds up a nice thick layer so you can actually sand it down and that fills in a lot of the voids before you get to your final coat now we are going to do some wet sanding between these coats to be able to get a good smooth finish so one more wipe down with a new clean microfiber towel and our isopropyl alcohol just to make sure we got every last bit of dust, especially right down in this little lip area here. You gotta press down firmly to get down inside. And this is cleaning up quite nicely, so I probably won't have to use the automotive cheesecloth that I mentioned earlier. Again, when you're painting outside, you don't wanna do this in really windy conditions for obvious reasons, because your paint's just gonna fly everywhere and you're just wasting your money. Today is a calm day, not very windy, and the temperatures are just about ideal for spray painting. 
Paint is, is sensitive to temperature. You don't want to spray when it's too hot and you don't want to spray when it's too cold. The other thing you want to do when you're painting is make sure that you wear gloves, not cotton gloves, because that leaves lint behind. Because the last thing you want uh, when you're manipulating the parts that you're painting is to put any fingerprint oils that'll ruin the paint. Again, it has to be very, very clean. So I have prepared my work surface here with a garbage bag. Normally I would use butcher paper, but I don't have any. And I don't want to use anything that would introduce lint. So don't use things like uh, blankets. And I, you can't see me here on camera, but I am using a mask. Happens to be an N95 mask of all things. I always keep them around for when I'm doing woodworking and the like. You always want to start in a spot that's kind of inconspicuous because if you mess something up or maybe you didn't get all your oils off, you can always sand it down and start over again. There we go. Very light dusting coat. Don't try and get a thick coat on the first time because otherwise you'll end up with paint drips which are a pain in the butt to get off. Just light coats and build it up as you go. I just finished spraying two light coats on this and I'm looking for any kind of imperfections. Things like uh, fish eyes, which is an indication that there's something underneath the paint that's causing the paint to disperse. Usually it's oils or something to that nature and I don't see any of that. Again, you want light coats. Let this flash off and then you can keep building it up. Again, this is a filler primer, so any kind of imperfections you can sand down to get a very smooth surface for your final coat. All right, third coat has been sprayed and I'm still not seeing any imperfections. So, so far it's looking really good. Just a little of the dust spot there, but that'll come out with some sanding. The one thing you gotta watch out for when you're dealing with rattle cans is that when you get close to the end of the can, sometimes it'll not suck some of the paint from the bottom of the can and you'll get spittles and stuff. So be very, very careful when you get towards the end of, uh, of these rattle cans. Otherwise you're just gonna end up with a mess that you're gonna have to sand down. So the priming is done. Hold on, let me pick this off so I don't look like a goof. There you go. So priming is now finished. I'm gonna let this flash off and then we're uh, gonna get to the wet sanding process to be able to get this down so a nice smooth surface so we can get the final paint applied. Well, we're back to the grind. It's been two hours since I've let this flash off. So now we're actually gonna do a little bit of wet sanding. So I just got some pure water here in a bottle and I have some 1500 grit wet sandpaper. And just apply a little bit of water. Now the water acts as a lubricant and it helps take some of the uh, imperfections along with it, but mostly it's a lubricant. I can already feel that this is getting smoother considering the slightly rough texture finish that the primer puts on here. You can see the sun came out, so it's actually turning out to be a nice day to be able to do this stuff. And I'm just kind of touching the surface, rubbing my hands, make sure I don't feel any high spots. A little bit right there. And this was the area here that was a, that little speck of dust, but I don't feel it anymore, it's gone. So before we actually start painting, this is our last opportunity to give it one last wipe down and double check for any imperfections. Patience and preparation goes a long way to making sure you have a very good final finish on this. And so far, I like what I see. It's very smooth and no high spots or low spots. So I'm just going over with isopropyl alcohol again. Now you don't have to worry about this taking off the paint or anything because it's too mild. You'd actually have to use acetone <laughs> to dissolve this paint. So the paint I'm going to be using today to paint this is, again, Duplicolor, again, because I like the applicator. This is a good trusted brand, is trim and bumper paint. Now, at the automotive store, I was looking for satin black paint. And it's hard to find satin black because cars are really not painted that color. So I thought this might be a good alternative to be able to get what I what I hope to be <laughs> a non-glossy finish. Now, it's hard to judge here by the cap color. It says black, but I'm gonna put it in an inconspicuous spot first, just to make sure that it's not 100% gloss. The other reason I chose this is because it's supposed to be good for flexible finishes. But the last thing I want is put something like a hard lacquer on this thing and ended up cracking because of temperature fluctuations or, you know, it's plastic. And see what transpires. So I'm going to let that flash off and we'll see what it, uh, what it looks like. This is, again, this is the underside. I don't care at this point what it actually looks like. I just want to make sure that it's not completely gloss. 
Good news, folks. <laughs> it's not glossy. It's a nice satin finish. So that makes me really happy. So I'm going to put the first light coat on. We'll let it flash off. We'll put a first coat on. See how that goes. All right, so the first coat has been applied. Remember, light coats at first. It's okay if the primer shows through a little bit. We'll fix that in subsequent coats, but I want this to flash off for a couple of minutes and then we can apply subsequent coats and then we'll do some wet sanding between each one. So the first coat is completely dry now. I've let it flash off. And you know what? The textured finish actually looks really quite good. I don't see any high spots or anything. So I don't think I'm really going to give this any kind of wet sanding. I am just going to uh, wipe it down real quick and uh, we're gonna add a second coat. So final conclusion here on the Duplicolor paint and bumper trim. It is perfect. It's exactly the finish I was looking for. It's not glossy. It's a beautiful satin finish and it's laying down nice and flat with no spittle. I love it. Anyways, this is why I love Duplicolor so much. So that concludes the painting process. I'm actually not going to do any more coats on this because it's worked out great and I don't need to do any wet sanding. This product has worked out really well. That's it for this video, but make sure you check in on the next one while I actually show you the install process of putting this on the car. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.